Hello and welcome to chapter 13, comparing several means, or one-way ANOVA. Before we begin, I would like to make a note that the exercise problems and review questions for this chapter, I believe in the syllabus I have them flipped. Um, this should be hopefully a very abundant when you try to do uh, an exercise problem. Um, of 13.28 and there are known exercise problems past I believe 10 in this chapter so that would be very difficult so the exercise problems review questions are shown here this is the correct ones I believe on the syllabus I have them flipped by accident so I wanted to make that um, brought to your attention so in chapter 13 there this is a very uh, long chapter and it goes over a lot in truth when we start talking about um, ANOVA, this could be uh, its own class by itself uh, with how many different things we can do with it and different types of tests. For the purpose of this class, I want to really focus on uh, 13.1, 2, and 3 um, as how we're calculating ANOVA. And then I would like to go over 4, 5, and 6. However, the statistics that are required for this are definitely um, more for computer-based and running actual tests with SPSS or other statistical software. I would like to go over the information that's covered for everyone's information. As far as testing and going over, I would like to really focus on 1, 2, and 3 for actually doing math and then more of a concept or theory behind 4, 5, and 6. So you might see questions more related to multiple choice or understanding with 4, 5, and 6. So let's begin. So we have this illustrated example. Um, we have pets as moderators of stress response. This chapter follows analysis of data from a study in which heart rates or beats per minute of participants were monitored after being exposed to psychological stressors. Participants were randomized to one of three groups. Group 1 monitored the presence of a pet dog. Group 2 monitored in the presence of a human friend. Group 3 monitored with neither dog nor human friend present. This slide we have data corresponding to each group and their outcomes in uh, beats per minute. I'm going to show you an SPS data table, and then once again at the end of all this, I'll sh show you how to run it in Excel. For SPSS, most computer programs require the data in two columns. The first column being explanatory variable, or the group, and then one column is for the response variable, or heart rate. So the way this would look in SPSS, and you can do it uh, in Excel this is the same way. You have your group one, and or you have your group column and you have your different groups that uh, the heart rates are categorized in. So that was our problem. So 3.1 is descriptive statistics. Data are described and explored before moving to inferential calculations. Here are the summary, summary statistics by group. Table 13.2 summary statistics, pets and stress illustrated examples. So here are our groups from the illustrated example with the pets. And we had 15 people in each group. Here is our average heart rate per each group. And then we have our standard deviation per group. And then the total for all three groups underneath. So we're exploring group differences. As we've done in the previous chapters, we've always been exploring the difference between uh, two groups, like a pre-post or paired or uh, one mean to another mean. Now when we get to ANOVA we're going to be comparing groups of two or more. And one great way to start doing that is to go back to our stem plots, box plots, and dot plots. So uh, John Tukey taught us the importance of explanatory data analysis with the stem plots, box plots, and dot plots. And these are things that we all did in the beginning of the semester. So here's a side-by-side -side stem plots for each group that we went over with the pet present, the friend present, and neither friend nor uh, neither friend nor pet present. So as you can see, our pet present here somewhat um, of, a, of a normal uh, curve here. This one, we would definitely have uh, a, a skew. And uh, 
on the third one it, it's a pretty normal one too um, so that's how we can look at it we can look at um, with the next one in our box plot we can look at the uh, our quartile ranges here and where they stack up and truly we can look at this data but is there any difference between these groups that's what we're trying to measure and can you tell if there's any difference between these groups by just looking at it I don't know if you can then you have a special skill and we need to uh, explore that a little bit more so 13.2 the problem with multiple comparisons as we talked about previously as you have more groups and you try to run tests among the groups you're gonna end up with uh, more possibility of error or the deeper you look into trying to find a difference the more you keep running tests eventually you'll probably find a difference somewhere but at what cost to finding also a type 1 error or type 2 error in your data so consider the comparison of these three groups uh, there are three possible t-tests when considering the groups remember for our null hypothesis if we were to actually look at these individually we have the group 1 equaling group 2 then not equaling it group 1 versus group 3 group 2 versus group 3 and measuring the difference between each one however we don't perform separate t-tests without modification this would identify too many random differences once again you can't keep performing t-test after t-tests to compare the differences between groups if you keep doing that you're going to increase the likelihood of a type 1 error and that's exactly what we talk about here the problem of multiple comparisons which is called the family wise error rate which is the probability of one false rejection of the null hypothesis. So a little bit of math, so assume the null hypothesis are true. At an alpha level 0.05, the probability of retaining all three nulls would be 1 minus 0.05 to the third power, or 0.857. Therefore, the probability of rejecting at least one null is 1 minus that, the complement, which is 0.857. 143. This is the family wise error rate. This is how we would calculate that. So we would say by running these tests uh, for these hy null hypotheses each way, we're increasing the error rate up to 14%. And remember, we don't like anything really past 5%, so increasing it to 14% is drastically huge. Uh, like I said, this is the family wise error rate. It's much greater than intended. This is the problem with multiple, com multiple comparisons. So how can we actually compare the problems? And that's where we get to ANOVA. Uh, well, before we get there, with the problem with comparing multiple groups, the more comparisons you make, the greater the family rise error rate is. Uh, this table demonstrates the magnitude of the problem. So as our groups, which are labeled K, for each number of groups, so if you had two groups, three groups, four, five, etc., all the way up, number of pairwise comparisons, as the groups increase, the number of different pairwise combinations there are also increases and as you increase them the probability of one p-value being 0.05 also drastically increases as it as the groups increase and as the groups increase the pairwise comparison also increases so how do we mitigate the problem of multiple comparisons there's a two a step approach test for overall significance using a technique called analysis of variance then you do a post hoc comparison on individual groups. So if you're ever wondering where ANOVA comes from, it's the first two letters here, ANOVA. So an ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. After you run an analysis of variance, you can do a post hoc comparison on the individual groups. Now, like I said before, I want to really uh, go over the uh, first three parts of this chapter uh, one two and three however afterwards um, when we go to the post hoc I want to just talk more about the theory of post hoc analysis and the different statistical techniques that are used there so before we go into 3.3 this will take a while I'm going to end this video here which is mostly going over this the descriptive statistics going over you know stem plots and box plots looking at them and then stating the problem and how if you have more than two groups this confounds the factor of having a, a higher probability of a type 1 error so the way we get around this is we test for overall significance using an ANOVA test or an analysis of variance so I'm going to start the next video going into 3.3 which is going to start talking about ANOVA and how we, it's actually calculated